Greetings and salutations. This is Abe Abdelhadi with The uh, Bitter Truth, where we may not have all the answers, but we are going to ask an awful lot of questions. Uh, you can always uh, become a bitter pill at patreon.com forward slash the bitter truth. And we're also available on all the usual platforms, the iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Libsons of the world. Podcast Addict is an excellent app if you want to organize your podcasts, if you listen to them that much. Uh, my guest tonight, I'm very excited to have him back on, friend of the show, has run for office, is getting ready to uh, launch another campaign. We're going to talk about that tonight. And uh, hosts a couple of shows. He hosts uh, Liberty Revealed and The Nightly Rant. Uh, Mike Mahoney from Orange County, California. Mike, are you there? Hey, Abe. How you doing? Glad to be back. Glad oh, to be back. Glad to have you back, man, because, you know, you, you make me sound smart. So uh, let's uh, let's catch up. Let's catch up. I know you're getting ready to uh, run for the uh, Libertarian Party of uh, California chair. Let, let's talk about that a little bit. What's going on with that? Actually, I'm running for a position called At Large. Mm. And, My bad. And um, what they do... Yeah, no problem. What they do is they have like a 12 member executive board that, of course, consists of the typical, you know, chair, vice chair, secretary, treasurer. Um, Then they have two area coordinators, one for Northern Cal, one for Southern Cal. And then they have four of us who um, would be considered at large members. And we're, I guess, kind of like your congressman within the party. And um, so we represent, you know, the, the entire state in quarters. And so we're, we have our convention, our state convention starts Friday right. in Sacramento and it runs Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday will be the, the vote, a bunch of debates about the chair position and the secretary position are the only two that are really hotly contested. And then there's, there's seven people running for four spots for at large. And uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I fully expect to, secure the position. I mean, I'm one of the few who's on there, who's been a candidate before. And, um, you know, when it comes down to numbers, that's one of the things that libertarians look at a lot is, Hey, you know, this person ran and pulled in some votes. So, you know, they're looking for, for that kind of stuff. And of course the big buzzword in California libertarian party right now is candidate support, which is sort of laughable because there really isn't any right now, but Right. That is one of the things they're working on fixing. It's one of the things I want to work on fixing because when I ran for office, first, we live in one of the states that has the most um, rigid campaign finance laws, if you can believe that. Mm-hmm. And they do, I mean, if your paperwork is due Friday at 5 p.m. and you turn it in at 5 p.m. and 29 seconds, they'll fine you $250 the first time, like $1,000 the second time. Yeah, it's it's pretty strict. And, uh, even, you know, if you're, if you're waiting in line, like local elections, you turn it into your city clerk. And if you're waiting in line to turn that sucker in Mm -hmm. and you happen to be the fifth person in line and you're after five o'clock at night, well, you're fine. Mm. Um, that's why you don't, you don't do it yourself. You need to have help. And unfortunately our party just isn't big enough to provide that help. Most other parties have like um, a set of, a, of treasurers who that's all they do. That's their job. Wait, they, most, they you mean, you, wait, when you say happen. most, you mean two, right? Like, like I don't see the greens or the, the, the freedom guys having anybody more than you guys. I mean, like it's just basically two parties that can do this like efficiently. Well, right. But how about we put it this way? The other party, since we both know that they're the same thing. Okay. Um, Ooh, the other okay. party, they yeah, have good. their own their own system. Because there's no such thing as Republicans and Democrats. There's just those guys. That's, that's right. Look at it. No, that's right. I, I've been saying some very crass shit at parties lately. And uh, the, I was at a barbecue the other night, and um, somebody asked me the same question that your wife has the answer to. And she goes, don't, don't you like anybody? I'm like, well, the Democrats pretend to buy you dinner while they're fucking you, and the GOP just fucks you. So... It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> That's a great way to put it, and it's really true. Like um, I mentioned, I had mentioned to you about uh, about a week ago on on your Facebook page about the Mueller report mm-hmm. coming out mm-hmm. and how you know. Remember what they told us, Abe. You know, if if anyone can find if the collusion exists, Mueller will find it. <laughs> He's the man who will find it. We are positive that he will find it. <laughs> then the report comes out and he says no collusion. And now they're like, wah, 
He didn't find collusion. Now we have to go and investigate. <clears throat> sure. Like you're going to do a better job than the guy that you just paid $30 million to. Was it 30 million? It was $30 million. <laughs> Fuck me running $30 million. I know. They could have given me 10% of that. I'd been happy. You, you know, that that could have been like anything. <laughs> anything useful. It could have been, oh my God. I, okay, so, okay, by the way, really quick, um, real quick, because I, I, I only met you last year, but I know we've been on this before we met each other. So, you know, quick high five, because you and I rule. And I won some money. Because while I lost money on Trump being impeached by February of uh, 9th of this year, which I made the bet on election night, and it was all these things had to come into play. And I thought, no, 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 if the Dems take it again, he will be impeached, right or wrong, he'll be impeached for stupid shit, but he'll be impeached. But this one, this one I was right, and I won some money. So I was, and and, I, and, 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 and like you, you take the slings and arrows, right? People give you all this conspiracy shit, but I'm like, wait, you're believing a conspiracy theory, but you're calling me a conspiracy theorist because I'm just asking you to show me some facts. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the problem with our society today is that you have people who they just talk in circles and you ask a question and they talk around your question. And then when you call them on it, if you dare, and of course I always do, um, and I'm sure you do too, Mm -hmm. they, they basically turn it around on you and say, you know, it's sad that you feel the need to do that. Well, no, what's sad is, you know, if you, like I mentioned, you know, there's a gentleman running for, uh, Libertarian Party chair, and somebody posted online, I couldn't even believe this, that the guy's homeless. I mean, I think that should be easily verifiable. That he has no job, that should also be easily verifiable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that um, he's an alcoholic, that might not be as easily verifiable. But if you're going to state those things, you would think you have some information to prove that it's true, right? Right. So when you're asked, hey, like if you said it to me, and I said, hey, Abe, Tell me how you know he's homeless. You'd have an answer, right? Or you wouldn't have said it. Right. But what they do is they talk around it, and then we're the sad ones for calling them out on talking around it. Um, and like this, <laughs> you'll get a kick out of this because the guy actually used a, like a Seinfeld reference about how sometimes it's just better to uh, walk away happy and stay positive. And I just <laughs> responded, okay, dot, 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 no soup for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, I and mean, then I was it, done. I wasn't going to comment anymore. Well, it's like my my. You know. um, I'm not going to name him. You know, he gets sued, I guess. But um, guy that I knew back in the day in the '80s gave me my first job in the record business. Who you know, old, like older than us. Uh, so you know, back in the '80s, uh, you know, he's older than us. And so you know, old school. You know, mom worked. You know, for uh, Harvey Milk back in the day. Just you know, old school San Francisco, so called liberal, right? I say so-called because there's a punchline here. Um, so the thing went down with with the DNC, and I wasn't playing ball. I was really angry about the Bernie Sanders deal. Um, I'm not a Bernie supporter these days. Uh, the last several years has shown him to be something else. But um, you, you can't – just like with the Donald Trump thing, I don't support Donald Trump, right? But the Russia Gate thing was wrong. It was a lie. It wasn't true. So when Bernie got cheated at the DNC and people were – hitting me with it. Well, well, you, you can't vote for, you know, uh, Jill Stein or Gary Johnson. What are you, an idiot? I'm like, well, no, it's my vote. I should be able to vote wh- how I want, where I want. And by the way, Hillary Clinton, if she had an R next to her name, you would pay attention to her sins. And if you look at just the vote count alone, because she, she took that primary 27 to 23 states, four of those states were super delegated, Michigan, West Virginia, Minnesota, and Hawaii. Okay. If, those weren't super delegated. The count would have been flipped. And then there was 14 states that were under investigation for voter fraud. You know, the most famous being New York, who mysteriously lost 200,000 Brooklyn voters. So how, how are you telling me with a straight face that I should vote for this person despite her egregious record? Libya, Syria, I mean, on and on and on. With a straight face and call yourself a so-called Democrat or a progressive how do you blame me for voting for Gary Johnson or Gil, Jill Stein? How do you blame me when this went down? And they sit there and they look at me. And so this guy that I'm telling you about, <clears throat> um, per, like l- personally messaged me on Facebook saying, well, listen, you should know that I know Rachel Maddow. And um, 
you know, she has things that you don't know. Okay, two and a half years later, she still doesn't know. So, and I and I and I PM'd him on that one. I respect the shit out of him. He he changed my life. He gave me my first job in the record business. He literally changed the course of my life, good or bad. Like he really good guy. But on this one, I'm like you elitist fuck. I mean, like how do you not see this? And she's still on yammering up. They're all on. I mean, have you noticed the coverage of this? Yeah, it, it's it's one of the things that bugs me. Like I, I tend to agree with people about Adam Schiff. And oh. they're asking for him to resign. I mean, I think I think he should resign because this is a guy now who's going to perpetuate this investigation because, you know, oh, you know, Trump Jr. took a meeting with um, a Russian person. Don't don't. I don't think that's OK. You may right. think that's OK. That's what he says. Um, so what? I mean, if you don't think Mueller thoroughly investigated that aspect, I mean, that sort of looks like a smoking gun, doesn't it? Well, see, and, but, and, 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 and but let me ask you. So, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things that bother me about this entire deal, because everyone keep th- this is the thing that if 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 you're a Trump supporter, and you know, I'm not going to ask, I'm not going to ask for forgiveness because you know I think you're an idiot. But if you're a Trump supporter, this is a big wet kiss to you, right? Because now these idiots are going to conflate his exoneration here, which is which is just. And and you know now they're going to conflate it with all his other sins and go see 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 oh emoluments clause oh forget that you know it's all a witch hunt no it's not all a witch hunt this was and because the media is so lazy and such a bunch of pieces of shit they went ahead and conflated all these facts together to make it one big thing Mike Flynn was convicted on lying to investigators about what about a meeting he took with a Russian ambassador about what about getting Russia to back off of Syria at the behest of Israel. Where's the right. collusion? Where's the election collusion there? Well, and that's that's the thing that a lot of um, we have a I don't know if you have or maybe you're not a, maybe you're aware of this, maybe you're not aware of this, but like there's a movement within the progressive Democrats mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that they call indivisible. Oh no. Not and so their whole idea is they have like a a national group, and then that na- national group has um, splinter groups that uh, we have one for in California. We have one for every congressional district, and they they were doing things like for Dana Rohrbacher, they wanted him out of office, and so they would well, tell every dickhead. Tuesday they knew they knew that that guy was going to show up at his office in California on Tuesdays. So that's when he would come, and they would stand outside with picket signs. Um, telling people, you know, he's a Russian troll, he's oh, this, he's that. And, you know, they were effective. They got him out. They did get him out of office. But they um, are truly, and I tell them this all the time, they're truly what's wrong with the Democrat Party. They they are insistent that, you know, first they were insistent there was going to be collusion. Uh, then when the report came out and there was no collusion, then they're insistent that, well, we know things that he didn't find. Really? Tell us. Tell us what they are. Right. Oh, I can't tell you. Why not? Why can't you tell us? You, you're. I hate that when people do that. You know what the they do that? They they I they, know. they, 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 they don't know. Well, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but they do that. Right. They, they do that because Rachel Maddow didn't tell them yet. Don Lemon didn't tell them yet. When Don Lemon says it, then they'll know. Yeah. It, it's it's okay. So like I, you know, you you're the, we're the same age, so we kind of came up through the same groups of politicians. Mm-hmm. And I remember when Rush Limbaugh was the big deal right. uh, on the radio. And people are like, you know, oh, you know, you only you only say that because Rush Limbaugh said that. It's probably <laughs> true. It's probably why they said it. But but now, you know, they got they got Rachel Maddow is like they're Rush Limbaugh. Oh yeah. Oh, listen, I've been telling she people says all whatever, week whatever and then they just bow down. I've been telling people all week you just got handed a long form birth certificate. Live. Get on with your life. Yeah, I love that phrase, by the way, because um, <laughs> it should it should have meaning to Democrats, it especially should. the birth certificate. Part. Right. Well, <laughs> and that's my point is like you guys are the left wing Sean Hannity. It's no different than telling they me that Barack Obama for, exactly. for eight years. I'm like they, they would zero in on this. He's a Kenyan Marxist, Marxist Muslim. I'm like, you know what, dude? He's got a lot of problems because I think he's a dickhead. But being a Kenyan Marxist Muslim ain't one of his problems. <laughs> that's not one of them. That ain't yeah. one of them. Like and exactly. like 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 he killed more Muslims 
than George Bush. I'm like, he had a kill list every Tuesday. How is this guy a Muslim? And and Marxist? He's the shittiest Marxist I ever saw because he was basically the black Reagan. And then Kenyon? Well, the birth certificate, it, well, I, I'm a big fan of like actual birth certificates. It, it just, the whole thing was like, he had so many fucking problems. You know, the Freedom Act, the, pay, uh, the, the NDAA, I mean, uh, uh, the banks. I mean, you and I could go on and on for an hour on just his fuck-ups. And, but these people won't let it go if they if they're not told by by who they latched onto. Just like <clears throat> excuse me, just like when he got elected in two thousand eight, Sean Hannity and Bill O'Reilly became the number one shows in the country because all the pissed off Republicans ran to those stations and ran to those shows to hear that you know Barack Obama Barack Obama was a Kenyan Marxist Muslim, and and just like yeah, Rachel like- Madcow became number one with the same the same thing. Well, and then, you know, if you recall, when Hillary was investigated by the FBI for uh, the email scandal. Yes. And James Comey came out and did a press conference, a very short one, by the way, where he essentially said, we don't have enough evidence to, um, you know, go indict her and go any further. But she did screw up in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Um, Then after that, if anyone brought up the emails... They would right. say, you need to get over it. You need to get over it. Oh, well, my okay. God. How is that any different than this situation? Yeah. I mean, to me, I see one difference. There wasn't some short little press conference. There was a two-year-long investigation that That's culminated right. with what I'm hearing right. is about a 400-page report. Yeah. But yet, then the other thing that you hear when you talk to the uh, – when I was talking about those individual people, they keep saying, um, well, you know, there were – um, many, many indictments. So what were they for? What did they get indicted for? Absolutely. Well, did any of them get indicted for anything relating to the election? Because my personal feeling is, and you know, people might be pissed off if I say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Say it. You invest, you go ahead and investigate Mark Zuckerberg. You can investigate Bill Gates. You can investigate Warren Buffett. I bet you those guys would end up in jail if they were under the same scrutiny through Mueller. They would be in jail because we all know that these big CEOs, they're, they're not supposed to negotiate with this country because it's, uh, they're under sanctions. Right. But they find a way around it anyway. Right. And they negotiate anyway. Why? Because it means more money in their pocket. Right. And so if you're going to take somebody and say, oh, see, they, there was an investigation into the election uh, issue. And they got indicted, so there, it's a success. No, it's not a success. It's about you just a different stumbled thing. into something. Yeah, you, you stumbled into something you would have found anyway. That's right. Uh, with pretty much any big, high-profile business. Uh, well, and, and moving, and this is the thing that makes me so angry. Moving the goalposts doesn't mean you're right, right? So, like yeah. these, these bets that I won, you know, and and and, and most notoriously, one was a five hundred dollar bet that I made about a year and a half ago. <clears throat> and admittedly, okay, we had some whiskeys. Fair enough. But sober, I'm like, you know, I made a $500 bet. If I lose that bet, I will pay that bet. When the BuzzFeed report came out, my buddy texts me and he goes, hey, man, that BuzzFeed thing might not look good. If you want to lower the bet, you know, let me know. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> and then two days later, Mueller comes out and says, yeah, that BuzzFeed thing was bullshit. The only time he really spoke out about anything. And, I'm, and, then, and then he got real quiet. And then about a week later, he goes, hey, man, listen, I was drunk. I'm, I'm really not comfortable with a $500 bet. I said, I am, but if you want to lower it, you you decide. I'm not going to say it's cool to lower it. I will pay you $500 if I lose. That was like three, four months ago. And he lost, and now we're down to $100, which is fine. But the point in all yeah. of that is he kept conflating all these indictments and all these convictions. I said, yeah, lying to investigators about what? Manafort was indicted on what? Dealing with the Ukraine. And tax evasion, not anything to do with conspiring with a foreign country on the election. By the way, side note, Hillary Clinton's campaign paid GPS Fusion and Christopher Steele a million dollars for the PP dossier Yeah, to get the same fucking information that they were accusing Donald Trump of getting on her. And that dossier was debunked like roundly. A million times. Even Rachel Maddow had a guy named Richard Engel about a year and a half ago. No, two years ago when Trump first took the oath of office. And Richard Engel, who's not exactly a right-wing press guy, 
came on. He said, hey, man, I've been looking for six months. It's not there. My colleagues, we don't, it's not there. It's, it's fake. It's false. And this is a, a direct quote from her. She said, well, it doesn't have to be true to be blackmail. Kind of like you don't have to read the bill to vote on it. Bingo. Thank you very much. That's a great callback to Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, absolutely. We don't have to read the bill to vote on it. We can... <laughs> same, same thing, man. But of course, but of course, shoe on the other foot. Um, you know, how could he have summarized 400 pages um, so quickly? Mm-hmm. How could he have done that? He couldn't possibly have read the report. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what? I'm going to come back with, you don't need to read the report to summarize it. Apparently not. Right? Hey, you know what? I used to work years ago as a paralegal. Right. And one of my jobs was to summarize um, deposition testimony. Right. You didn't read it word for word. You didn't. You couldn't. You didn't have time. So you'd you'd scan through and write down the highlights. It It was a deposition summary for a reason. And that's exactly what he gave them. And the other thing that I think is crazy right now is he sent them a follow-up letter saying, I'm going to send you the full report, but we have to redact sensitive information. Oh, no, they're not okay with that. Mm. They want to see everything. And so I don't know. I think I think what it really comes down to, what it really proves all those indictments, it proves that you and I have been right all along that uh, big business sucks and they're corrupt and they're a big reason why we have a lot of the problems we have in our country. Well, let me ask because you, they're all going around the laws. Well, and that that that, that, that that's I want to piggyback on that in a second. But um, <clears throat> uh, when did Will Barr deliver the whole report to Congress? He hasn't yet. Okay, he said, told them that it would take him until about the middle of April because they're working with Mueller's team to redact things. Oh, and by the way. Ask yourself this question. You, ha, ha, yes or no, Abe? I'm going to be the interviewer at this point. <laughs> did, Mueller, did Mueller ever correct misinformation that came out uh, about his investigation? No, except for we BuzzFeed. Except for BuzzFeed. He didn't yeah, correct a single. Did. So at least once, right? Yep. So do you think if Barr had misrepresented what his final conclusions were, that he would be silent right now and not saying anything? Mm. I don't. No, I don't either. I think somebody would step up and say, not going to say what's in the report until the report's been released, but that summary is inaccurate. Doesn't say that. No. Well, Just be- like the two-year-long investigation, <laughs> we're on, you know, isn't it interesting? So the investigation started, and what have we all been doing for two years? We've been waiting with bated breath mm. to find out, you know, did our president work with the Russians to get elected. Nope, he didn't. We find this out. Now everybody's waiting with bated breath to see the whole report. But you know what? It's going to be just as big a uh, nothing burger as the results of the investigation so far. That, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be the guys. I personally think that the attorney general, regardless of who appointed him, would be a moron to misrepresent what was in the report because he knows that Congress is eventually going to get the full report. Even if he, even if he said, no, I'm not giving it to you. They, they'd go to court. They'd get it. You know, they'd get a hundred percent. Well, but that's the thing so, though. So we, why lie? Go ahead. Why lie about it? That's, well, the, that's the point I'm trying to make. He wouldn't well, lie about it. He'd be an idiot to lie about it. He didn't need to lie about it, but then the American people that believe that this was true. I, I mean, for a couple of years now, I've been like ticking down, because it all happened kind of one, not one at a time, but sometimes two at a time. But things would happen. I'm going, wait, how is Trump a puppet if he's shoveling weapons into the Ukraine to back an Obama-appointed puppet government? That's what happened, right? right. And, and Trump is still supporting those guys. He's still bombing Syria. Not a very Russian thing to do. He wants to invade Venezuela. Not a very Russian thing to do. Um, <laughs> he imposed more sanctions, more sanctions on Putin and Russia in the last two years than Obama did since 2014. So like, yeah, one after the other, after the other, wait, 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 wait. So either Putin's a shitty puppeteer or Trump doesn't know what a puppet means because they're, they're not, and and then he, he moved NATO even further up Russia's ass. I think he uh, got five more countries, by the way, if you remember your geography, including Colombia, Colombia is now a NATO nation for the last seven months. 
yeah. I forgot that Colombia was – wait, they're not in Europe, right? The North Atlantic Treaty Organ- – wait, wait, where's Colombia? Yeah. Colombia's on the other side of the fucking Panama Canal. Why are they being NATOized? Well, because we want to invade right. Colombia and we have to have legal bases in somewhere in South – South America is going to be turning in the Middle East in the next five years if John Bolton and Elliot Abrams get their way. But all that to say, the, everything you're saying – Makes sense, but what drives me bananas is when I see these people go, oh, he's a puppet. I just rattle off five or six points where he's a really shitty puppet. He's acting like a unilateral president who runs the most powerful country in the world with the most powerful defense in the world, who does says fuck all to the UN and doesn't give a shit for international law. And if they're brown, we bomb them. And he's not going to get us out of any wars because he's a non-interventionist. He's going to get us out of these wars to make his own wars in Iran and Venezuela, but I, I just, um, uh, I just, I, just, I, just, I, I wanted to ask you about the bar, the Will Barr thing because I know you had a um, an issue where you, you know you, you pick, I want to piggyback on what you said a second ago where you're saying you know the congressional Democrats are pursuing this shit further and Adam Schiff being at the head of the uh, of the line two two things I want to play devil's advocate for a second do you think calling for his resignation is too strong? Um. No, I think I think it's like negotiating um, a business deal. You you go high, they go low, and then eventually you meet somewhere in the middle. And I think that's what that was. Was uh, they they went high. They went to the you know the the ultimate call for you know let's get this guy out of office. That that's what they're that's what they're saying, and they know that's not going to happen. And that's even I don't even think that's really what their end game is. I think their end game is more just to make them all look stupid and call attention to the fact that I mean, what I don't understand. And I bet you in the, in the, when, when this campaign season kicks into high gear, mm-hmm. you're going to hear a lot of, if the Republicans are smart, mm-hmm. they're going to hear a lot of sound bites of these Democrats saying, if anyone can find the collusion, it's going to be Mueller. <laughs> and then they're going to say, but did you find collusion? So then, so then, I, so then, if he didn't find collusion, then why are they still investigating and wasting money on this? And t- I know, let's not forget. See, you know, I run a business, and I only have so many hours in a week right. um, that I can work because you know I do need to sleep and I need to eat, and you know I need to decompress a little bit. Sure. So if all I ever did was focus on some one person and try to prove they did something wrong. I would never make any money because I would never have time to do my job. That's right. And that's so that's exactly what's happening with Congress right now. You don't hear about them considering important bills. Why? Because they're too damn busy investigating Trump. And what is it about him that gets them in such an uproar? See, I, I, I think I know what it is because he, he, he's, this? he's just not nice. That's it. Well, but that's all because maybe, because because that Obama, might be a good thing. Bur, bur, no, no, I mean that that's it because <clears throat> they, I saw some. Uh, I think it was USA Today the other day put out a report, an, an article. When George W. Bush left office in two thousand nine, amongst Democrats, not Republicans, but amongst Democrats, he was polled at eleven percent popularity. Right? You know where his numbers are with Democrats now. It's 60%, much, much higher, I know 60%, that. 60%. 60%. Because Democrats, Republicans, the, 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 listen, the American people have a short memory. Corporations, they never forget. But George W. Bush was horrible, horrible. And now he's lionized as this wise sage. And he was so kind and I could get a beer with him. Really, the guy that got us in a goddamn Afghanistan and Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. Iraq cost us $7 trillion. We lost 8,000 kids in Iraq and we killed over half a million of their civilians. Yet he gets a 60% approval rating and I'm the asshole. You're the asshole. It's well, it, you know, because you don't you don't forget. Rate. You don't forget. I've talked to you a bunch of times about other things off off offline. You don't forget. You remember things as they happen in real time. 
To you, it's like last week that we that Iran Contra happened. Right. To you, it's na- to right. you, it's last week that George H. W. Bush pardoned Casper Weinberger and Elliot Abrams. Abrams and 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 Elliot Abrams was responsible for killing eighty thousand El Salvadorans, and he was guilty of war crimes and lying to Congress, and still got off the hook. You remember that in real time, like it was last week. Ninety exactly. percent of these people do not at all. Well, that's, so, that's something that my wife and I agree upon a hundred percent. Is that if you're not a student of history, um, you're you're doomed to create the same, repeat the same mistakes. Because that's what that's what you know you're saying. You know, American people have a short memory. Uh-huh. That's part of the problem. Mm-hmm. Is if they would remember the things that happened and why they happened and who was responsible for them happening. They would think five times before putting certain people back into office over and over and over. Did you hear the latest thing today that that and, and I see these things and I just shake my head because it, it's starting to feel scary to me that, you know, we've always as Americans, one thing we've always been able to um, kind of rest comfortably in is we have a constitution mm-hmm. that dictates how things work <laughs> and the constitution can't be easily changed. Right. It can be changed. They were smart to make it that way, right. but it can't be easily changed. Right. Yet you get things like this movement going on where all these states are trying to do, uh, they're going to give their electoral votes to the winner of the national popular vote. It's called the NPV movement. And that's, <laughs> that's one, you know, run around the Constitution. And now today... Our good friend Bernie Sanders mm. has come out saying he wants some form of term limits for Supreme Court justices. No, Bernie, that's not how the Constitution is written. Uh, see, and, th- and this is what makes me mad about. Okay, side note: I was all Bernie all the time till he choked. Right, and this is where like, where he lost me, and he hasn't regained my faith yet. I was waiting for the Al Pacino moment at the DNC convention. Right. I was waiting for whatever right. deal he made. I was waiting for him to walk out and go, I'm going to tell you something right now. Uh, I won this fair and square. I'm taking my delegates and I'm joining Jill Stein. And that's what I was waiting for. And everybody lose their mind and CNN and everybody freak out for months and months and months. How could he do this? And he's a traitor. I was, I was waiting for that. That didn't happen. And then he went for however many months on the unity tour with Tom Perez. I'm like, dude. You were pulling in 35,000 people when you were sincere and had a message. Now that you're supporting Hillary Clinton, the, the lady you said did not deserve to be president, I, 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 I am, I, people are all about him now. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. If he lied to me before, he's going to lie to me again. People yeah. I, tell, I, th- I say this to people all the time. I got fooled in 2008 with Obama. I voted for him once. Y'all got fooled with, you got, y'all got fooled with Trump. Live with it. And that's it. And, and and Bernie lost me with all. And and, and even then, this what you, what you just said, the fealty he pays to this NPV thing, he's all about that. It's like, dude, of course you're all about that because you know you're going to get screwed in the Electoral College if it goes to that. Because the, the Democrats failed the states that Trump took in the Electoral College. And, and to his credit, he ran to the left of Hillary and he went to the states that she wouldn't go to. Because a couple of things she kept saying was, you know, because these are things for a bumper sticker. Medicare for all will never come to pass. And, oh, hey, the status quo is awesome. <laughs> You're not going to run a campaign on that. And she refused to campaign. She, re- God damn it, these Democrats, they don't take responsibility, man. Like all this two and a half years that you and I are talking about is because the Democrats will not take responsibility for their failures. When Al Gore lost, they blame Ralph Nader. Really, if Al Gore won Tennessee and Arkansas, guess what? He wouldn't have needed Florida. Exactly. Well, and the thing is, that always that that's a, a sore spot with me, is the people who blame, oh, you voted third party and you're the reason that Trump got elected. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I wouldn't have voted for Hillary Clinton if someone put a gun to my head and said, either you vote for her or I pull the trigger. My mother said, I, I love my trigger. mother. If they put a gun to my mother's head, I wouldn't vote for yeah. yeah, I'm not voting for her. And so you can tell me all day long that I'm the reason uh, that Trump won. And, you know, basically what you're saying is, if you really break it down, I wish you hadn't voted at all. But then what, how would I have affected the outcome? Because I wouldn't have voted for Trump. 
and I didn't. But and see, I wouldn't have voted for Hillary, and I didn't. But so I wouldn't have. So me not voting wouldn't have been any different than me voting. And especially where I live in California, my my vote Means as nothing. a libertarian certainly doesn't count at all. No. Um, never going, never going to never either. Going to. But but this theory that someone voting for a third party helped person A or person B is bullshit because a vote is a vote. Every vote is a vote. And if you if if your next door mm-hmm. neighbor voted for Trump, the other guy to your right voted for Hillary, and you voted for Gary Johnson, mm-hmm. well, then that's three people that each voted for a different candidate. That's right. So now there's a tie. One, it's a one democracy. It's called a democracy. God forbid yeah. Gary Johnson or Gil, Jill Stein. Uh, you know, participates in a democracy. Well, that's it. And, you know, the one really until we can get anybody. I mean, I think I understand not wanting to have the national debate stage filled up with all of these whack jobs that run for president. Mm -hmm. I I understand that. I mean, even my party has has a guy I'm not going to name him especially with the convention coming up. Uh, but <laughs> this guy is, you know, his, he says that if he wins the, the election and his first um, order of business is going to be completely um, eliminate the federal government. Well, <laughs> dude, good luck with that. You know, um, he, he's a whack job. He's going around in a bus with this giant, you know, banner on the side of the bus talking about eliminating the federal government. Oh, so, boy. you know, I understand not wanting a guy like that on the debate stage, but if you were, a candidate in a party that has ballot access in a certain percentage of the states to the point where if you were to add up the electoral votes for mm-hmm. those states, you could win. Right. You should be up on that stage. Well, God, well, 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 Jill Stein and Gary Johnson were on were, – were, if I'm not mistaken, the Libs got in on 49 states and uh, the Greens got in on 50 states. And – when it used to be the PTA, the you know w- League of Women Voters, I call them the PTA because they're really sweet pers- people, and they let Russ, they let uh, Ross Perot on, they, they you know John Anderson back in 1980. Oh, you can debate too. Why not? It's democracy. When they got taken over by that corporate shill organization sponsored by ATT and everybody else, then they came with this arbitrary number: not an elected uh, body, not a state, not a government body, not not an elected bunch of officials, some random corporate approved the election, the Council on Election Commissions, whatever they're called, the Commission on Elections or whatever, uh, electoral, electoral debates. They came up with that arbitrary 15 – if they don't have 15 percent polling, they can't get into the debates. Well, if you don't let them on the news, if you don't talk to them, if the only places I'm seeing these people are on Democracy Now! and RT, it's going to be hard for them to get 15 percent. Where would you come up with that number? Oh, out of our ass because we're corrupt. <laughs> Because we're corrupt motherfuckers and we suck massive corporate cock. That's exactly. Exactly. Seriously, I mean, you don't want to say because you're polite, but it is. Ex- it, that's exactly what it is. And so, and and, and and I remember, I remember defending Gary Johnson, like, oh, he botched on that Aleppo thing. Donald Trump shoots himself in the dick three times a day. If you call him, if you call yourself a conservative at all, you should be all over Gary Johnson. If you think you're a liberal or a progressive, because liberal's just not even a word anymore. If you think you're even remotely on the left and you're pro-green, and this is a statistical fact, by the way, with Jill Jill Stein, 60% of the voters who voted for Jill Stein were not going to come out at all. So they were not going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Yeah. That's called democracy. How am I going to get a green person who's against fracking and against banking and against big insurance and big pharma to come out and vote for Hillary Clinton? Yeah. Right, she's the antithesis of one hundred percent. How am I going to get a so-called conservative who's a real conservative to really come out and vote for Donald Trump when we know he's bullshitting about the TPP and he's bullshitting about the non-interventionist wars? And here's a guy who ran a, 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 as governor twice in a blue state, won, balanced the budget, took education up several notches from where it was. How am I going to get a conservative to vote for that orange guy when the real guy, eh, he fucked up on Aleppo because he maybe maybe he had a bowl the night before. I mean, God bless his heart, he smokes pot. Right. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that blacked. Oh yeah, dude, yeah Aleppo. Okay, yeah, and the whatever. I mean, how many botches did that guy have in his campaign compared to Donald Trump? People watch too much goddamn television, man. Well, and and you know, speaking of Johnson, I mean, one of the things that sort of attracted me to him was. There were two things. One is that I, he, there was a story where when he ran for governor, 
somebody supported him with a $70,000 donation to his campaign. And um, one thing that's really famous about him is he had open door policy once a month. Anyone could come talk to him. Imagine you could go talk to the governor of your state anytime you want um, during the allotted time period. And he, this guy shows up and says, you know, I'm angry with you. You know, I donated $70,000 to your campaign and you're voting against my bill. And he said, are you campaigning against my bill? And he said, would you like me to refund your money? And pulled out his checkbook. <laughs> so that was basically a fuck you. you don't control what I do. Right. Just because you donated to my campaign. Right. Then the second thing that impressed me, and this is something we talked about on the nightly rant yeah. uh, just recently. I don't even know if the episode's out yet. Um, he was really pushing that I side with website where you go through and you answer questions about your ideology and your beliefs. And then it, it had each candidate fill out a similar um, questionnaire. And then it tells you who you're most aligned with. And it'll tell you, okay, you're 97% aligned with, um, you know, Gary Johnson and you're, you're 60% aligned with Hillary. Mm. And the idea being what he was telling people is I'm not telling you to vote for me. I'm telling you to vote for the person you're the most aligned with. Right. Because that, if you really think about it, if we want the best representation we can get, everybody should be voting for the person that they think is going to help them the most. Yes, I know it sounds selfish. No, no, but no. That's no. really what it should come down to. Right. But, but, but to speak to your point, though, don't you find that most people are uh, vote against their own interests in, it, in, in the interest of ideology? Uh, yeah, constantly. They, they, they do really dumb things and – um, I mean, it's interesting. It's one of the things I've noted about um, when I communicate with you about things. Um, there's, I have a lot of respect for you because you don't just spout out, you know, bullshit. You have your reasons why you believe what you believe. And you, you kind of have that, that Bernie Sanders theme in certain areas of your beliefs that I just don't buy into. I get it. And get that's it. usually where we, and that's usually where we butt heads, you know? Um, <clears throat> but Beyond that, it, here's the thing. When I talk to you and you, you're one of the few people that I know that when I leave a conversation with you, I don't go to my wife and go, my God, that person is a blubbering idiot. Because you have your reasons why you believe what you believe. And they're based in fact, not fantasy. And if every American would start voting that way, we would see a major difference in our country. Because right now, they're... They're doing the whole, oh, the Democrat Party sent me a, a checklist of who I should vote for. I'm going to bring that to the, to the ballot, to the ballot box. And I'm going to check off the, the things the Democrat Party told me to vote right. for. Well, who doesn't understand that they're allowing the Democratic Party or the Republican Party to have many, many millions of votes by influencing those people? Here in California, there's a big controversial thing that happened and. You know, they tip, typical of California politicians, they passed it in the, you know, the black of the night. Um, they, they have this vote harvesting thing. And so if you're allowed to sign an envelope saying, I'm letting so-and-so turn in my ballot, and you don't have to seal it, you can just hand it to them. And then they Boy. can put in there who, who should get your vote. Whoa. Why? Why do we do that? Why would any person who cares about their vote mm -hmm. give it away to another person? Mm -hmm. I mean, that just gives that person multiple votes. And that's how a lot of people uh, in California won their seats was that they, you know, they talk about this blue wave in California. You know, there wasn't a blue wave. They basically stole the election sure. by convincing, I'm sorry to say this, but a lot of senior citizens that we'll, we'll take care of your vote for you and bring it into the to the ballot box. Oof. That way you don't have to go through that hassle. And then they change see, the votes. See, and, and who's to say they don't open it, look at it, and throw it away because it's not what they want? You know, you know what makes me, okay, but you know what pisses me off by those motherfuckers is the senior citizens. Th this isn't our grandfather's senior citizen, okay? No. Those pricks came up in the 60s and 70s, right? They saw Vietnam, they saw Watergate, they saw some real ugly shit. And for them to trust anybody to take their vote and go, and they're like, w w w when did you become a doddering docile asshole? Okay, if you've got Alzheimer's or your dementia, I get that. 
But if you're just going to sit there and trust people out of laziness, you deserve the government you get. And that sounds horrible. Well, sure. And I know that sounds terrible. And, that, and that's what they did here. Yeah. It's what they did here. Ugh. And there's stories about um, people who, like, there's a new, it's kind of ironic because at the same time in Orange County, they did this thing where you can go online and you can put in certain identifying information about yourself mm. and it'll tell you when they received your ballot, when your ballot was counted, you know, your mail-in ballot, and nobody bothered to check. And now there's stories of people who have been, like, their, their grandkids are saying, you know, Grandpa, you know, you let that person take your ballot. Let's check and see if your ballot was turned in. Right, guess what? It wasn't. Ugh. So, you know, what, what does that tell you about um, the situation? They, they, they literally stole those votes. And <sighs> something needs to be done about that because, well, I mean, it's not okay. No, it's not. It, no, it's not okay. And so today I had uh, released a show with a guy named Mike Melia, who's a little bit older than us, and he'd he'd been through the sixties and Vietnam and all this stuff. <clears throat> and he made this. The, the theme of the show basically was, a, was the subversion of the counterculture. And he, the point he kept making over and over and over was, we don't protest anymore. We just don't do it. Yeah. Last 20, 25 years, 30 years, we've just we, – we bitch to our elected officials and then we're surprised they don't do anything. These people have never done anything because it's right. They do it because they're afraid. You know, it's like Nixon was the last of the New Deal presidents. Honestly, if, if you want to look at what he passed, he passed EPA, he passed OSHA, HMO, Title IX, Cancer Act. He was not this – <clears throat> you know, grandfatherly nice guy. He did it because he was afraid of Ralph Nader, right? And yeah, and, 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 and why? Because Ralph Nader was in the Congress every other week. He was on national television before he got marginalized. And so he brought his issues to bear. And the people were like, yeah, you know what? I agree with that guy. And then they'd protest. And then the Vietnam War was out there and everybody was protesting that. Nobody protests anything anymore. And they just wait for Congress to get us out of Syria. And they just wait for Congress to bring our guys home from Afghanistan. They just wait for it. And that's never going to happen, man. We need we need yellow vests right now. And I don't mean hooligans and, you know, stealing stuff. I mean controlled – controlled is a bad word – organized. Not like the, the, the Occupy guys where they're sitting in the park behind their cones and getting their heads bashed in by cops anyway. I'm talking – real demonstration with real reasons and bullet points so that a guy like Macron, who's basically the French Obama, will respond and give in within a few weeks to four or five of those points. Oh, guess what? We won't privatize the airports. That is a revenue for the country. You know, I'm not going to privatize the airports to make it for the big tax break I gave my billionaire buddies. Right? It's like, it's, it's like Scranton, Pennsylvania or Anderson, Indiana. These people are selling off their, their, their resources because there's no jobs anymore. You know, it's like, we, we just don't have that in the street anymore. And Americans are got, are too goddamn lazy. Well, and I, and I mean, the protests that you do see aren't really protests. Mm -mm. Um, and they're, and they're, they're almost as stupid as the position that you hear um, being. Well, all, all those um, marches mentioned. against, all, all those marches against Trump, what the fuck was that? Right. What was it about? We don't like him. He tweets mean things. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it, it kind of brings up an interesting point, though. I think it would be really intriguing if he were to use Twitter in a, a less combative, asinine way. It would be interesting to see what he's thinking at certain times. Uh, but, of course, you know, with him, it would be impossible. But, you know, I'm thinking with a a reasonable individual in that office. Yeah. It would be interesting to see what they're thinking, um, what what's what their thoughts are when certain tragedies happen. Mm -hmm. That I think would be interesting. But all of this, you know, so and so um lied about me today. Well, who cares? They all who lied. Gives a Every and, and last one of them lied. He couldn't even take he couldn't even take the Mueller report gracefully. He starts going after Adam Schiff calling uh what a pencil neck or pencil beak or what, what he I mean I'm like, dude, really? You just couldn't lay back and let the truth be out there to just waft in it. You had to go after Adam Schiff, like on a personal level. I think Adam Schiff's a dickhead, but you couldn't just leave that alone and let him just sort of hang on his own hook. This guy's been pushing this shit for two years. 
Let him talk his stuff. Let him say it. We know he's lying now. He couldn't even do that. He's an idiot. Well, no, because if he did, if he did that, then he wouldn't be the center of attention. It, it, and that's really what it, what Trump's all about is being the center. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Even that dumb show he did with the what was it called? The, um, the Apprentice. You know. Oh yeah. It, it was supposed to be about the. It was supposed to be about the people who. Um, were on the show, right. but it was always about him. It's centered on him and his daughter. Mm-hmm. Talk about a really weird, warped father-daughter relationship, right? I, 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 I you know, it. <clears throat> I don't want. Yeah, it, it creeps. It creeps me out when people. Make, <laughs> I'm, I don't have any kids. I, I got no dog in this fight. But it's just it, it. When they show those pictures, I'm like, I don't, I don't know, I don't touch my niece like that. That's just weird. Like, why is he? Why is she sitting on his lap? Like, it's like. Ah, if my niece sat on my lap like that, that would be weird. That's creepy. Yeah, that's like crap, that's so like too. Catholic priest type shit. I'm like, it, yeah, and and then he says the things that he had said, you know, many many times, not just one time. I mean, if you know, if you had a few beers like I have, and you you know, you say something like you know, once that's called an incident, but when it's over and over and over, it's a situation. Yeah, I would date my daughter. Oh, look at her legs. Oh. It's just weird. It's just, it's just weird. But hey, you know, I think we're gonna get, finally get rid of um, Uncle Joe Biden from the political scene. How? Listen. How? Now, wait, wait, wait. Second lady came out. The, second okay. lady now. The the okay, real quick, and then you say your thing. But how we have to quote get rid of Uncle Joe Biden? Like, just trips me out on how stupid people are. Why is he still here? <laughs> Like th- For that was the, the biggest mentioned reasons we discussed. That that was the biggest pass in all of electoral history, going back to like when Jesus was around. You're a failed fucking presidential candidate. You're going to retire as a senator, and and just Obama gives you the VP, and now you think you're relevant. Well, I'm just waiting to watch the hypocrisy because, you know. Oh. This is no different than uh, what happened with Kavanaugh, mm-hmm. right. and yet you know they were screaming how that means he he's not uh, qualified to be a Supreme Court justice. Well, then I guess that should also mean that then Biden is not qualified to be president of the United States. See, here's the thing: he's not qualified to be president of the United States, but for so many fucking reasons that these people will not acknowledge. He wrote the Patriot Act in 1994. How do you think? A week after 9-11, we had a 3,000-page bill that, again, nobody read, but they <laughs> voted on it. Um, it he, he wrote that in 94. He termed the coin super predator. It was him. He butchered yeah. Anita Hill. He butchered Anita Hill in that Clarence Thomas hearing thing, and honestly, I believe her. Um, I mean, yeah, me too. A hor- horrible fucking senator and just a fucking knothead plagiarist didn't do more than mid single digits the two times he ran, and now they're like floating him out there. They they, they call sixty these boom, boomers you're talking about. They call these sixty five year old boomers at their on their landlines. Oh, I like Joe Biden. I remember that time Nixon called him when his wife died. Okay, yeah. What the fuck are you people saying? It's excuse me that you have to say what you just said disgusts me <laughs> like the, the, to get to get rid of him like what what is he here is he a contender but it's but it's unfortunate but it's true you know he he unfortunately was a contender was a contender um there but but again i've told all my friends this the democrats don't have anybody <clears throat> that makes any difference in this election process they don't, they don't. they're gonna hand trump four more years and absolutely, um, I really think that's why they're working so hard to come up with dirt on him. And um, what's really intriguing is you hear all of these Democrats screaming for impeachment. Yeah. And yet there's been a couple who have brought um, articles of impeachment to the floor and they either don't vote on it or when they do vote on it, it gets overwhelmingly defeated. Well, two weeks. They're afraid for whatever reason to well, go against them. Well, well, two weeks ago, Nancy Pelosi said she wasn't going to do it. It would be bad for the country. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I, I thought he was a traitor. You you said, she said treason. She said treason. Yeah. Aren't you, I, I thought you were an elected official to protect me 
from the treason guy and the traitor guy. And now you're like, cool with it? You know why? Because she got the goods on the Mueller report, what was coming out. That's why. Yeah. And, and, and this isn't a conspiracy theory, right? The results will tell me it's a fact, i.e. she's not going to pr- pursue an impeachment against him for anything. So even if the Mueller report shows other things worthy of an indictment, not the election, but let's just say a monuments clause or whatever, she's not going to pursue an impeachment. No, she never do that. Right. And so you're she sort of like, that. Right? it's not popular. Mm-mm. And that's the thing that makes me kind of angry with most Americans is that if you say what you're saying right now, you're called a conspiracy theorist, yet Rachel Maddow, who in my opinion is Alex Jones with a different cup size, can just say what she wants for two and a half years. And the most she'll do is acknowledge that, well, maybe this part wasn't true. However, I got 15 reasons. She banged through a 15 reason to to, to pursue this bullshit the, the three days after the Mueller report came out. She's an insane person. The biggest conspiracy theorist in the history of this country with an audience bigger than Alex Jones. And she's not getting her Twitter page taken away or her Facebook page taken away. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they, they only do that to one side. They don't do that to the other side. Ah. And, that's, and, that, and I'm not going to pick sides on which side they do it to. It just depends. It really depends on the issue. Sometimes it's the Democrats that get screwed over. Sometimes it's the Republicans that get screwed over. But they never enforce those policies, and I say that word lightly, <laughs> um, equally. You, you, know, you know what it is, though? And, and we're going to wrap up here in a couple of minutes. But it doesn't matter what side you're on. If you support the establishment, you will never be called to task. Because Alex Jones got deplatformed just like Mint Press News. And Mint Press News is a peer-reviewed news site that leans left, but they're not in support of the establishment. They don't support Russiagate, yeah. right? They don't support Russiagate. They acknowledge that, you know, APAC is every big as a lobby as the NRA. Um, you know, the, the Truth Dig, that is another peer-reviewed journalist website. They got deplatformed just like Alex Jones. And within a couple of weeks, by the way. So when my left-wing friends were like, oh, yeah, Alex Jones is an asshole. I'm like, you watch. And you said the same thing, by the way. You came on my show last fall, said the same thing. You said the exact same thing. That this was going to happen on the left, and then they wouldn't even notice. And they didn't. They didn't. I got lunch with a buddy of mine over the weekend. We talked about this very thing. He's like, well, Alex Jones is doxing people. Okay, yeah. Make laws for that. You don't deplatform him. And if Facebook and Twitter are businesses, unquote, then they're too big to fail, unquote. Then you do what Teddy Roosevelt did and you do some union or um, trust busting r- laws like with oil and rail and lumber, right? And if they're too big to, if they're too big to fail, then you, you, you break them up. So Facebook is not the – I don't need Mark Zuckerberg telling me what is appropriate. I don't need Mark Zuckerberg telling you you can't have Natalie Rant on on your Facebook page because it's fomenting discord. Or or Google manipulating search results. Right. You know, not, and, and you know the the fact that uh, like during those Zuckerberg hearings that we that our um, elected officials proved that they know nothing about technology mm-hmm. is pretty damn scary. Mm-hmm. Especially since young kids are on their staff. You'd think they would have talked to them about it and found out, you know, what should I be asking? What kind of questions should I ask? Right. Now, they, they just, you know, if if I send an email on WhatsApp, then you don't send emails <laughs> on WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. That's I'm getting stupid. over being it's sick. Stupid. It's, mad. it's maddening, man, that, that the country is like this. And sadly, you know, I have a, a daughter who's 17. Mm. So she will be eligible to vote in the next presidential election. Mm. And she doesn't give a shit about it. And she, she told me that she doesn't give a shit. And this is why she said, you know what, dad, I don't even know what to believe because I hear things on the, on the TV. I go look it up. I see, you know, 500,000 articles on that uh, agree with it. And 500,000 articles that say it's not true. Mm-hmm. How do I know what to believe? Mm-hmm. 
And it's sad, but I think ultimately we're going to probably see somewhere in the near future, we are going to see the lowest voter turnout in the history of our country. And it's just going to keep getting worse because the younger generation has no interest in being a part of all this drama. Mm -hmm. And they're just not going to vote. See, but, 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 but to, 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 to make, to further that point for a second, they will, if someone or sub or, or a group, a party, another party or two or three come out and express their interests, right? Like, okay, so Beto O'Rourke, Robert O'Rourke here in Texas ran against, excuse me, Ted Cruz. He lost by two and a half points. And everyone was all excited. Well, you know, no, you know, Democrats don't get that far in Texas. Yeah, you would have kicked his ass if you had some real shit to talk about other than values and fairness. You come out with some real platform stuff, real policy stuff. Medicare for all, free education, guaranteed minimum wage, which you and I, I know we don't agree on this. But you come out with some real shit. A hundred million voters stayed home in 16 and 18. A hundred million voters. Why? Yeah. Because like your daughter, they're going, all right, this is all bullshit. What's it? We all do this. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? I see the same old, same old. That guy is cool with deregulating banks. He's cool with shipping jobs overseas. He sh- he's he seems cool with you know, cutting taxes on, on on trillionaires and increasing my taxes. So why am I going to vote? I'm getting fucked. Why am I going to vote to fuck me some more? Oh, but they're talking about ver- fairness and values. So I'm supposed to like them, right? It, it, totally true. That's you, exactly what my daughter says. Yeah. Not you know without the cuss words. But, well, because well, you you raise your daughter right, and I'm a pig. I'm sorry. But that's what she says, you know. And and my daughter is very intelligent. And mm. let's face it, she's grown up listening to me bitch and moan about some of this stuff. And she just she's all confused, and she's like, you know, I, I try to help her. I try to tell her, you know, sure. Here's how you do research, and here's how you figure it out. But it's it gets to the point where, especially my daughter, she hates drama. Mm-hmm. And so she sees all the drama that's associated with the political process. Right. And she's just like, no, nah, that's not for me. I don't, I don't need that. So I think you're right. I think if, if somebody could step up and actually have a real platform, I mean, I remember being in high school and Ross Perot yeah. was going to be the savior, but you know, the dude had a platform and it spoke to some people. Yeah. It spoke to a lot of people, dude. Had Bush, Bush had failed. Yeah. Bush had failed. And Ross Perot was like, look, man, this is what we're going to do. We're going to keep jobs here. We're going to lower the middle class tax. I mean, he was he was speaking to people who were hurting. Yeah. That's why he got 17% and of the vote. We need that. Yeah, we need that. We need that in this country again. We need somebody to step up and and have a, a, a platform. So when are you going to run for president? <laughs> yeah, um, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, 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 it, it would be a big waste of money because it, I, I would steal this Bill Hicks joke and I would do it verbatim and I would get to a point and at one point I'd be saying something that would sound crazy to some douchebag reporter and they would they would say, Mr. Abdelhadi, have, have you done drugs? And I would say, you know, sir, that question is beneath you and because of my use of hallucinogens, I see through you. And that would be the end of my <laughs> campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I, what's sad is I will wait. I'll be sixty-five years old when I run for anything, and just I'll, I'll have waited thirty-five years to steal a Bill Hicks joke to torpedo a campaign. <laughs> but that's where my 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 little black heart goes. But it, it, real quick, in wrapping up, the one thing I want to speak to really quickly about your daughter, which, by the way, I respect what you're saying about her. Um, but if you flash forward her ten years, that's the American voter, right? Because now she's like – she lives with you and, she, and stuff's happening and you, you know, you, you're know you taking care of a lot of her bills or whatever. She probably has a job and that's cool. But you know she's not going to starve next week if she stops working because you know you got the nut covered. But flash forward right. 10 years later when she's got a big-ass student loan and a career that may be going or not going the way she wants it to go and she's seeing all these bills and then God forbid her partner gets sick or you know something or whatever. That's what these people are seeing at 28 and 30 and 35. That's why they didn't show up to vote because Hillary Clinton was saying the status quo was fine. Hillary Clinton's telling a 12-year-old black girl, you sit down and shut up and I'll talk to you when we're ready. I mean, wow. Okay. That's that's awesome. Uh, We're going to stay in – we're going to have a a, a no-fly – when she said this in the debate, we're going to have a no-fly zone in Syria. 
with a straight face. I lost my mind. And I'm sure like you, 90% of your friends are going, why are you so upset? I'm like, I'm sorry. Do you understand what she just said in a public forum? And Putin's watching this too. Like, are you out of your fucking mind? We're saber rattling okay. the number two u- nuclear power in the world over vanity. Yeah, it, it's, you know, I do have something to compare that to. I have a daughter who is 27 mm-hmm. and she's in the process of, she's engaged to an Australian and she's in the process of moving to Australia. Mm. And so she has to come, she's been there for three months and she has to come back for a while and go there again and come back until her permanent visa is approved. She was, she spent a lot of time talking about Trump and unfortunately She's a product of the soundbite generation. Right, so right. She says things, and I like, you know, I, I can't believe he grounded the, the, the 737 jet. I can't believe he grounded it. And I said, do you realize he was one of the last ones in the world? In the world. One of the world. last leaders in yes. the world yes. to do that? In the world. So why are we pointing at him saying, I can't believe he did it when all these other people did it first? Right. But they don't know about that. You know why? Because the news here doesn't report that. That's right. They only report that he did it and he's an asshole and he's this and he's that. And you know what? He may be a lot of the things that they say, but my daughter, she just buys into it. And hopefully my other daughter will be smart enough to not fall into that. And I think I actually do think that this generation coming up is a lot um, smarter about things. I mean, look at the the Parkland students and trying to start a movement sure. for gun control. Sure. I mean, those kids care about things and they're trying to actively change the world. Yeah. And I hope they succeed because it needs that. Well, we and, need that. Well, I'll tell you really quick in wrapping up. Um, I was 25 when I voted for Ron Paul in 1988. So there's hope for your 27 year old daughter is my point. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- I was disgusted when I saw the field of Democrats that were running in 1988 and they picked <laughs> King Michael Dukakis. I'm like, I, right. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't see a documentary. I, I just had a feeling this is a fix. How do you get Bob Kerry with one leg who's doing Deborah Winger in the governor's mansion as a bachelor in 1988? Deborah Winger, by the way, not 90-year-old Deborah Winger, but 1988 yeah. Deborah Winger. Right. And, and I got to sell this guy to the American public. He's a Purple Heart who lost a leg in war, who was an economics professor. I, I missed the meaning. Bruce Babbitt, before he sold his soul to the Clinton devil, you know, uh, Paul Songas, Paul Simon. There's so many guys that were running in that field at that time. And they gave it to Michael Dukakis. And I was like, it's a fix, man. And I just went ahead and voted for Ron Paul because he said everything I liked except for the abortion thing. I'm like, you know what? But that guy's cool, man. And the Fed, I'm right there with you, bro. And – I, yep. I was all of 25 and no idea what, you know, I, I was reading the L.A. Reader. To, it was no internet. I was reading the L.A. Reader to get all my South American news. I had no idea what was going on. So you're, there's hope for your daughters, my point. I hope so. All right, buddy. Hey, listen, we got to we gotta wrap this up. We've been a little long. But, uh, folks, again, my, my guest has been uh, Mike Mahoney. Again, listen to uh, Liberty Revealed, the nightly rant. Um, awesome uh, podcasts and not just because I've been on them a couple of times, but just because they're awesome. And, uh, you know, uh, again, patreon.com forward slash the bitter truth. If you want to become a bitter pill or just listen to us on all the usual suspects of where you listen to. And if this stuff makes you uncomfortable and I hope it did sleep tight. <laughs>